Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Today I'm taking a look at chocobo racing in the Golden Saucer and in my previous video I took a look at the basics of your chocobo, your stats, your attributes and how to kind of get around and manage your stamina. Today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the courses that you're going to go on, items, training and abilities. Before we begin, just a quick heads up, this is sponsored content, so thank you to Square Enix for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned in my previous video, it's one of those joyous occasions though, where they are sponsoring me to make content I really want to make, because who doesn't want to spend their time chocobo racing? So now that we've gone over movement and stamina, one thing that you're going to have to get to grips with to really master these tracks is basically what is on the actual track. So kind of like Mario Kart, there are panels on the floor. There are four different colour panels, two of which are good, two of which are bad. So if you see panels on the floor that are blue or green, those are good, purple and red, bad. Run over a blue panel and it will grant you a short boost of speed. Run over a green panel and that will instantly restore about 7% of your maximum stamina. However, if you hit a purple panel, it will give you the heavy status for 5 seconds which significantly kills your maximum speed. And a red panel is probably even worse because you will instantly lose about 15% of stamina which is nasty. So avoid, avoid, avoid. In a lot of the earlier classes you'll just be able to run around all these panels and avoid them but in the later classes basically as you become the chocobo master and work your way up the ratings, the later tracks become insanely hard with panels lined up in a row so you'll have to jump over them so straight away from the very beginning get your mindset get your training into jumping over these things not running around them just train yourself to jump over them and that will put you in good stead for the higher races one other thing you might notice is weather conditions. There are three different kinds of weather, fair, foul and neutral. Fair tends to be things like sunshine, clear skies and heat waves. Foul are things like rain, showers and thunderstorms. And neutrals are kind of like, well, neutral, like cloud and fog. And basically, depending on which type of weather your chocobo likes, they'll get a slight advantage or disadvantage depending on what the weather of the course is. Now, there's some debate as to what exactly the advantages and disadvantages are. There doesn't seem to be an exact kind of boost or debuff, so it's a rather curious feature that doesn't really seem to have too much of an adverse or positive effect on how your chocobo races. As well as panels, you're also going to start getting some nasties actually turning up. So about R60, uh, once you hit the R60 courses, you'll get things like sabotenders. There are also things like coblins, pests, bells, mandragoras, imps, and even cactuars. And all of these things have incredibly annoying penalties towards you. They'll slow you down, they'll inflict things on you like silence and distraction, they'll affect your stamina, they'll affect your your speed so basically avoid all of these bad guys as quickly and as efficiently as you can one thing that can help you though if you get hit by any of these bad guys are items uh, so I mentioned them in my previous video but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to some of the items you can pick up so as I mentioned before choco potions restore stamina by 10% stamina tablets prevent stamina reduction for 10 seconds but there's also sprint shoes which give you a quick burst of speed for about three seconds making it identical to the ability choco dash 3 more on abilities later Choco Ether, that's a useful one. It basically allows you to use a previously used race ability once again. You can only use your abilities once during a race, but if you pick up an Ether and hit it, then you can use that ability again. In terms of healing, the ultimate item is the Hero Tonic, which is a rare item and invigorates your Chocobo for 15 seconds, increasing its overall performance while preventing and nullifying any current enfeeblements. Stamina also gets consumed at a decreased rate, so basically this is your ace in the hole. This is an amazing item if you can get it. When you get one of these kind of stat boosting and healing items, I recommend you don't use them straight away unless you really need them. Because obviously, things like the stamina tablet can help you when you hit a course hazard. So if your stamina starts getting affected and drained, hit a stamina tablet and that'll help you out there. If you do the sprint shoes, then that can nullify any slowdowns you get from course hazards. So hang on to these unless you're actually suffering from stamina loss or slow or heavy or anything else. 
Gravable, that's a pretty nasty one. It inflicts heavy for 10 seconds on the forerunning chocobo. And Briar Caltrop, this is a nasty one. It surrounds your chocobo in a ring of thorns, which saps the stamina of any chocobos that enter at a rate of 5% per second. Spiderweb is another offensive item. Basically, it stops the chocobo immediately behind you from using any items for 10 seconds, so that can be a bit of a bugger. And remember, that's the person behind you. Stamina Swapper is a rare item and that basically changes your chocobo's stamina with that of a front-running chocobo. And of course, in that respect, the swap is only made if the chocobo in front of you has more stamina than yours. And now, my favourite one is the Choco Meteor, which summons a meteor from the heavens to wreak havoc on all four running chocobos caught in the way. This inflicts 20% stamina damage to all chocobos in front of you, as well as the lamed status effect for eight seconds, which basically prevents all acceleration, including from items and abilities, so they can't get out of that one. It is a devastating item, and as you can see here, it is the game changer. So as ever with all items, don't just spam them straight away. With the offensive ones, a lot of them have area of effects, so wait until you're in a pack of people to make sure you take out as many people as possible. Don't just hit use as soon as you get those items. Keep them for the last leg of the race when you can really screw people over right at the finish line. So one important thing to consider when you look at your chocobo and look at how you kind of, your style of racing is its abilities. Abilities are active and passive effects that your chocobo can learn as it ranks up that'll basically help you out on the course. So you will automatically learn an ability once your chocobo reaches rank 10 uh, and this ability is randomly decided. If you don't like your ability though, you can buy an item called Leth Water from the Tack and Feed Train in Chocobo Square and it's really cheap and basically once you get that head on over to the race Chocobo trainer and select unlearning race abilities and use the left water to delete the ability. If you do this then the next time you rank up you'll learn another new ability however if you want to learn a specific ability you can buy that uh, in the form of manuals again from the tack and feed trainer head on back over to the race Chocobo trainer and you can learn it there. So as you can see see here I swapped Choco Reflect for Choco Drain uh, and the reasons for that is because personally I didn't really feel like I was fast enough uh, to use Choco Reflect and also at this stage of my racing career I wasn't getting hit with too many uh, adverse uh, effects or abilities from other Chocobos um, and I felt that maybe draining people's stamina and being a bit of a saboteur was a bit more up my street. Um, so yeah it's basically down to your personal taste as to what ability that you you teach your chocobo um, it depends on your racing style so take a look through all the abilities you can buy um, and see which suits you the best on a side note, once your chocobo is a high enough level to be retired and bred, every chocobo that you breed basically has a chance of learning one of the abilities that its parent learnt. So if you retire one of your chocobos and it has something like Choco Dash, then the child of that chocobo has a chance of just hereditarily learning that ability. So you can actually get two abilities, one learnt and one that's hereditary. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to be doing a video on chocobo breeding. Duncan is going to be doing that, so if you want more details on Chocobo breeding and abilities that you can learn, then check out his videos. On the note of abilities, you can actually train your chocobos as well. Um, and basically the way that happens is by feeding them, uh, because what better way to learn stuff than by being fed? So if you head on over to the Tack and Feed Trader in Chocobo Square, you'll notice that she has a whole bunch of grade one to grade three feeds. And they do what they say on the tin. Each blend will level up a specific stat, whether it's acceleration, cunning, endurance, maximum speed, or stamina. And it will level up that stat depending on which grade that you buy. So if you just purchase the feed and then head on over to the Chocobo Trainer, and then you can go and feed your Chocobo there, and it will level up whichever stat you wanted leveling up. 
As well as purchasing all these feeds from the Tack and Feed Trainer in Chocobo Square, Grade 1 and Grade 2 feeds can actually be crafted by culinarians. So Grade 1 feed needs you to be a level 30 culinarian, while Grade 2 feed uh, needs you to be about level 50, I believe. And it involves all kinds of ingredients like worms and wild grass and gasal greens and all kinds of things you can imagine that uh, would go into Chocobo food. Now, heading back to your Chocobo stats screen, you'll notice that on the front bit of it, it has training capacity slots. And every time you feed your Chocobo to train them up, it will take up one of these slots, regardless of what the grade of the feed is. So basically, if you have a Chocobo you really, really want to keep, make sure you only feed it grade three food, and that will give you more bang for your buck, basically. One thing to note, and hopefully Duncan will cover this in more detail, is that the effects of your training do not carry over to children of this current chocobo. So the amount of feed that you feed up this chocobo with and the stats that get leveled up, that's not going to affect this chocobo's children if you choose to breed this chocobo in any way. Training using food is basically for this current racing chocobo that you have. Uh, yeah, so don't expect it to go down into the offspring. So you probably don't wanna to waste too much money feeding up your chocobos. So that's it for these two videos. I hope that I've given you a good basic grounding in chocobo racing and given you the kind of basic tools to go and be a chocobo master. As I mentioned, Duncan is going to be doing a video in chocobo breeding and that's pretty integral if you want to breed a premium chocobo that's gonna take you to victory. Although, you know, that said, you've got to have the skills that thrill as well. And if you pay attention to what I told you and you really use those items, make sure you keep an eye on your stamina and make sure you keep an eye on your training, then you should be racing like a pro in no time. In addition to Duncan's videos, Martin will also be doing videos on how to master some other games in the Golden Saucer, and that is Triple Triad and Lord of Verminion. Meanwhile, in the new year, Rithian and Kaf will be doing videos on how to start in Final Fantasy XIV, how to get your head rounds of creating a new character and get to grips with an MMO like this. So be sure to check out those in the new year, and links to those videos will go in the video description once they are out there in the world. So before we finish for today, I just want to tell you guys about the selfie competition that we're running because selfies are the hottest Final Fantasy feature this year, both in 14 and in 15. So basically the rules are go out, take a selfie, make it outrageous, make it outlandish, take selfies on your own, take it with your minions, take it with your mounts, take it with friends, take it with whoever. Then what I need you to do is tweet your in-game selfie using hashtag FFYOG and also the hashtag FFXIV and then make sure you follow the at Yogscast Twitter account uh, so that we can contact you if you win. Submission deadline is the 14th of February 2017 after which we will contact winners. The first prize, basically if you take the best selfie that we all love, then basically your selfie will get turned into a piece of art by our Yogscast artist extraordinaire the insanely talented Nina Serena. It'll get framed, it'll get signed, and you will also get a copy of the Encyclopedia Eorzea, which is a beautiful book. Um, four runners up will also get copies of the Encyclopedia Eorzea. So go forth, take selfies, tweet them using hashtag FFYOG and hashtag FFXIV, and we shall let you know by 14th of February who the winner is. So good luck, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time.